Well, come on in, FG fam, to another episode of the Northern Michigan University Dynasty as we begin season number two today. If you're excited for that, drop a like on the video as we're taking on the Cincinnati Bearcats. They've been a pretty consistent team over the last few years, and this should be a tough matchup, but they got to face us at our house. Lee Bowen and Blade Nelson have made the team here, new freshman recruits. However, they're going to take red shirts here in season number two. You can Cammy Copeland, the right guard, true freshman. He'll be starting, and he looked pretty solid in camp, holding up some of our good defensive linemen for Mr. Alejandro Clank, and he's going to need that kind of help. Right end, Dill Burt, number 69. Nice. He will also get the start at defensive end this year, likely in some rotation with TNJ and some of the other guys we have on roster. Miles Burrow will be a true freshman starter at right outside linebacker. Number 15 was a lot to handle in camp. Really good pursuit of Clank. Hit him hard a couple of times. We'll see if that ends up holding true for us here in this ball game at home against Cincinnati. Obviously, they're much better than we are, but the team is making strides forward here at the Superior Dome. Northern Michigan. It's raining in the dome, boys. It is raining again. Gotta ignore that. You know, a little suspension of disbelief here. It's a fantasy world. As Clink throwing this thing over to Rigoberto Ramirez Jr. for 25 yards of the 50-yard line and a first down. NMU continuing with the football. It's Baza beats it up the middle in the first couple of plays for NMU. Season number two has worked out pretty well for us, getting some big gains down the field. Alejandro Clank going to roll to his left, and he will dive, trying to escape a sack. I don't really know what he was up to there, but it leads to a second and 27, and here's Clank. Getting beat down again, another big loss. This one at 12 yards, and that drive came to an end abruptly. So here's Evan Prater, the new quarterback for Cincinnati after Desmond Ritter gets drafted in the NFL, and he makes a big throw downfield, setting up a first to goal for Jerome Ford, who in this universe did not get drafted in the NFL, and I, don't, I can't see why as he scores the first touchdown of season number two. And unfortunately, it's against NMU. Here goes Baza Beatson on a third and two. He's not going to get there. NMU feeling a little bit of pressure here. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Obviously, better team here at home. We're going to make this play over to Rigoberto Ramirez for seven yards. He's our leading pass catcher last year, and he's looking to be that again. Three catches for 45 already. Next play, it's a first and 10 for Alejandro Clank, but unfortunately, he has absolutely no time. He's sacked for a loss of eight by Zaque Lawton. If they get the football back, here goes Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford busting a tackle and finding his way into enemy territory. Rivero giving chase and is able to to help bring him down, but after a 45-yard rush, that is dangerous. Cincinnati already with a 7-0 lead after one, and they are looking to drive again. We'll be back. Back to start the second quarter in this Cincinnati game, and there's Prater going to hand it off, going to toss it over to Jerome Ford on the option for a 14-yard touchdown run, and that's the second one of the day for Ford. Cincinnati going up 14 zip. We got a tight one. UTSA looking to get a win at home over a ranked team in Kansas State. Looks like K-State's got a lot of, to wor of work to do this year. Here's Clank, and again going down. Took a little long to get rid of the football there. But we've got a flag on third and 20 here after the big sack, and it is going to be a face mask against Isaiah Ruffin, and that is a rough call to say the least, as that's going to give an automatic first down to NMU, and Rigo with a 12-yard catch is going to get the first down picked up here as NMU continues moving along into enemy territory this time. Clank, broken toe. He's going to return soon, though, getting that toe fixed on the sideline, and Josh Allen comes in and throws this interception to Smith, and that is going to go into back into our side of the field with the first turnover of the ball game. Marion Smith gives Cincinnati another prime opportunity with 1.22 to go. They get it over to Scott and Chris Scott for 17 and a first down. 
Real chance to extend this lead, and it's going to be Everett Prater by himself taking it in for the five-yard touchdown run. And Cincinnati going up 21-zip in the first half of this ball game. Kansas State does end up getting the score against UTSA to come away with a win. And so ranked team does prevail in that one. We will see if the underdog can come out on top in this one as we go into the half down 21-0. Coming out of the half, it's 206 to 123 in total yards. I just feel like a lot of those total yards have gone down in sacks. And speaking of sacks, there was one against Cincinnati. Here's Prater again dropping back, looking to throw, throwing deep. Finds Bell. Bell gets away from Sav Rambo. Gets away from Bailey. Breaks a tackle, makes another man miss, and he will score. And Cincinnati opens up the second half. Evan Prater's been perfect on the day. One yard shy from being totally perfect with 169 yards. Here's a throw, and that one is intercepted by Jarman. Kendall Bedgood couldn't win the 50-50 ball. Not that there should be a 50-50 ball in the middle of the field, and you can tell Alejandro Clink is uh, feeling it in his toe. It is broken, and there's a nice run right there for Prater. He slides down inside the five. Cincinnati with another opportunity to extend this lead, and Prater's going to take it as he throws it to Jaden Thompson for a four-yard touchdown. 35 zip Cincinnati absolutely blitzing our Wildcats here. Clank throws this one away, but it is deemed a fumble. We will take a closer look at this. And as you can see, Clank does attempt to throw it away, but what he ends up doing is it slips out of his hands. So that one is called a fumble. I don't know if I 100% agree his arm was going forward. You can let me know in the comments section. Texas is back. I mean, no, they're not, as they lose 21-7 to to in-state rival Rice. The Rice Owls go into Texas and get a win. Here with three seconds to go in the third. Rigo with a beautiful catch on third and six, and he breaks a big tackle, getting inside the 15-yard line with a 25-yard catch. But this game is all but over. At 38 to nothing, this is not what fans expected starting out in season number two. We'll be back for the conclusion of this game. All right, here we go into the fourth quarter, and Baza Beatson gets the first touchdown for NMU with a four-yard TD run. There you go, highlights of the day. That's probably the best one so far. There's Bell into the end zone, a 20-yard strike from Prater. He's 13 of 14 with three touchdowns on the day, and he's run for one. Don't forget that. Boise State goes on the road to beat BYU to start their season off. The rivalry game happening early in the year. And now us on offense. NMU, can the Wildcats get another touchdown? It would be great if they could. Clink has to throw this one away, but it's a turnover. The pressure just too much in this one. Our offensive line is not gelled together yet. There goes Jerome Ford and untouched. Believe it or not, he was not touched by a single defender on that run. 52 to seven. Cincinnati with the big lead. Clank's gonna throw the short throw to Brewski. He was looking for something a little bit deeper, but he'll get Brewski down to the five. An opportunity here for NMU to at least put another touchdown on the board. We'll see if they can complete that. Here's Baza beats in, and he does it again. Baza with two touchdown runs today. All of last season, he had five. He's got two already in game number one. There goes Jerome Ford. He's going to run right side, and Ford breaking some tackles. Not even breaking some tackles. I can't even lie to you. There was nobody who touched him on this play either. And with two seconds left, Cincinnati is going to win this game 59-14. to Clank 18 to 27 for 217. Not a horrible game, but he did throw an interception and no TDs. So the true sophomore has some things he's going to have to work on. Josh Allen came in, he went one of two for 12 yards and a pick. Not not good in relief for him. Baza beats in 145 yards and two touchdowns. Clank's just got to somehow take less sacks. That's the only way. Rigo Berto with 93 yards on his day. Bruski with 51. Bedgood with 36. And Hornsby with 25. Jace Fye did get a five-yard catch. I'd like to see him do a little bit more. We'll see if we can get some more guys involved in the offense. 
in the next couple of games, but it was tough today, man. Just could not get an offense rolling, and the defense didn't do us any favors. So we'll see what happens. We are going to have a doubleheader, the very first doubleheader of the series here in this episode. So we do take the big beat down there from Cincinnati and they are now a top 25 team for doing so. I don't see any big time upsets here of ranked teams except for that Texas game. I mean, obviously Texas is not back. Penn State beats Buffalo. Western Michigan beats FCS. So does Akron. FCS actually ends up beating Central Michigan and Eastern Michigan. Kind of shocking and also embarrassing for the MAC Conference. Our next football game against number 10, Michigan. And that's why we're going to get this one out of the way here. You can see A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus going against our guys, which we don't have much of a chance. Corso knows it. Let's go to the big house, down to the field, and uh, get ready to watch this team probably get beat down something similar to what we did against Cincinnati. You'll know that we are ready to compete when we are ready to take down one of these big squads, or at least give them a run for their money. Let's see, is that today? Well, Baza Beatson goes for a one-yard turnover on fourth down as we take a chance early. Could argue whether we should or should not have done that, but there goes Blake Corum into the end zone with a 41-yard touchdown run, and Michigan already has themselves a 7-0 lead. Next possession, we're on a fourth and five, and we're going for it again, and it's Brewski taking a big hit. And picking up a first down. Some big clutch moves there from Brewski. Fourth and eight later on. Clink going to find Kendall Bedgood, who makes a move to the outside and gets brought down by his shoestrings after a gain of 30. Second and one, it's Baza. And Baza already with his third touchdown of the year. He has the first three touchdowns in the NMU offensive season. So there you go, that'll tie it up. And that's how the score would be at the end of one. Tied at seven. Are you shocked? We'll be back for the second quarter. Into the second quarter we go. 6.20 to go in the second quarter. Second and four, here goes Corum. Cuts to the right side, beautiful cutback, breaks a tackle and picks up 20 yards and a first down as Michigan goes into the red zone on this very next possession. 22.3 a carry for Corum thus far. Here's McNamara and he finds Wilson. That was a perfect throw to Roman Wilson from Cade McNamara. He's three of four on the day for 33 and a touchdown. Really, really nice throw off the break. Here's Clink. He's looking to make a really nice throw, but unfortunately it's more of a Brett Favre-esque try to fit it into a spot it doesn't belong, and it is intercepted as Michigan will take the football back here in enemy territory. Second and two, it's Wilson again, this time inside the 10-yard line with a 28-yard grab, and with four minutes to go in the half, Michigan already up 14-7. They're looking to extend that lead. Here goes Blake Corn breaking a tackle, breaks another one and finds his way into the end zone with his second touchdown of the day. 21-7 the score. Just three minutes to go before halftime here, a little over three minutes, and Clink looking to roll. He finds a man deep. Look at this, Brewski wide open. Look at six giving chase there for Michigan, and Brewski will get dragged down at the five by his shoestrings. What a tackle, a touchdown saving one. But then Baza Beatson will get another touchdown, his fourth of the season. All four TDs for NMU coming from Baza. Now Clink gonna roll to his right and he looks for Calvin Mentor. And Mentor turns it upfield with a broken tackle and he's dragged out of bounds after a gain of 46. Northern Michigan ends up with a field goal on that drive, and we got a 21-17 halftime game. We're in this. Back for the third quarter, and Cade McNamara will start with the football on a third and 10 opportunity to get off the field. Lutz gets broken bad by Henning, and Henning will find his way all the way to the end zone as he also breaks Levi Frost's tackle attempt for a 68-yard touchdown pass, and that's the kind of big play we just can't give up if we're going to beat a big team like this. So 28-17, the score. Here's McNamara. What a perfect throw. McNamara's come out firing in this game. That one goes to Henning as well, and it sets up a first and goal. Fake to Corum, throw across the middle to Quinton Coleman. 
35-17 is the score. 3.08 to go third quarter. Here's McNamara. He's going to throw end zone. That one's caught by Henning. 22 yards and a touchdown, and Michigan has blown this thing wide open with three touchdowns in the third quarter. 42-17. to We'll see how poorly this one ends for NMU when we return. And we are back here with five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Here's Clink throwing a screen to Mentor, playing backup running back duties. You might ask why. Well, they're looking to make him more of a Debo Samuel type of guy. They get a field goal at the end of the game there, making it a 42-20 final. Clink throws for 281, another pick, no touchdowns. He hasn't thrown the touchdowns this year. It's been Baza beats and running it in from about four or five yards out or even less. He had another good game. Baza Beetson might be the guy to ride out this season. We'll see. He's played much better than he played last year. This offensive line may be more geared towards run blocking than pass blocking. It's just been really hard to stick with a run game when you're down 20 points at times, which we have been against some of these bigger, better teams. And we have a couple more of those to go in the next episode. So we'll see what ends up happening against these more established programs. That's going to be the problem. We're going to have to find out how to generate some offense in the passing game more specifically with the pass blocking against some of these bigger teams. Miami, Ohio ends up beating Army. Ball State goes down. Bowling Green goes down. Ohio goes down. Buffalo barely beats FCS. Akron actually beat Pitt. That's a big win there. Our next game is coming up against Michigan State. That's another big program. They're going to be coming into our building. They're 0-2 on the season, as are we. But obviously, they are a way better club than we are. They're just a better football team, a more experienced football team. We'll see. Maybe we can pull an upset off. If you guys think we can, let me know in the comments section below. You got any score predictions for that game? Just in case it's a blowout and we do another double header, let me know what you think is going to happen in that Syracuse game, too. They're number 11, and they are undefeated. Syracuse. Very highly ranked for the first time in a long time. That's how the Michigan State games have fared. They lost an overtime game and then straight up lost another game. Clink does have nearly 500 yards passing with two picks, but it's been Baza Beatson who's been surprising. 6.2 yards a carry. Really love what he's bringing to the table, and we'll see what we can do going forward. For them, we're going to have to watch out for Curry because our running defense sucks. So we know we're going to have to have to watch out for him. It's always a running back who destroys us. Guys, I really appreciate you checking out the video. I appreciate you guys submitting your players to be on the team. If you didn't make it this year, you may have a chance next year. I just couldn't wait forever to be getting this video out. I've already postponed it. Thank you guys so much. And especially thanks to all my wonderful channel members, Kaz Cray Gaming, Rigoberto Ramirez, Raider Bear Comics, Christian Horn, Derek Vance, t 24 TNJ, Jeffrey Kendrick, David Morselander, and V-Dub Productions. Appreciate all you guys. Make sure you go and check out the description below for links to the Discord and my Twitch. Come on over and hang out, twitch.tv slash fgstreams. We always have a great time there. I will be live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Come on and check us out. See you later, guys, and I hope you have a really good one. Build you, build some help.